Hello Base family. It's easy to look back on 2020 and just see a bunch of bad things. But we have to focus also that there was some amazing music that was created this year. And it's a shame if it gets overshadowed by current events. So I asked the panel of bassists, what are their favorite recordings that were released in 2020? And um, I'm going to give you mine in a second, but also if you just feel like it, you know, check out these uh, albums that everyone's recommending. And um, if you like the album, support the artist, find a way to buy the album or whatever. Um, and definitely the arts have been really tested this year. And uh, if we can rally together as a community and finish up the year strong by blessing uh, these musicians and artists with uh, by buying their albums, that'd be great. So, uh, actually four albums this year just really blew me away and helped me deal with all that's going on. And it started the year with Steve Bailey's release of Carolina. This album of duets is, is unbelievable and it just knocked me on my socks. I featured it as an encore item. Um, I mean, Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull du Bois with him. Um, gosh, he's got uh, Victor Wooten, Willie Nelson, Ron Carter. They, uh, the duets are amazing. And, uh, you know, just when you start thinking you're, you're getting there as a fretless player, Steve puts out another album and just moves the bar that much higher. But uh, it's a great album, and, and I, I encourage you to check it out. Um, then I would go into uh, Grafenberg Disciples. This is a new band that actually came out in 2020, and their independent release, uh, Johnny on the Spot, is, uh, you know, it's progressive music. Um, I don't want to call it prog rock because it's not. It's, there's prog elements, but it's also really accessible. And, uh, you know, it's prog for everyone. Um, very talented musicians. Bassist Bob Madsen, who is a primary songwriter, primary lyricist. Uh, and in this project, with this band, he teamed up with Hans. And I'm going to mess up the last name. Uh, that's why I'm looking at it. I want to make sure I get it right. Eberbach. Uh, Hans Eberbach, and who's Hans is one of my favorite singers uh, to come out. And, uh, you know, uh, as she, uh, she Lay Sleeping was the first single, um, and I saw it on YouTube, blew me away. The whole album is good. And it's so good that it just recently, I heard, got picked up for by a major label for major distribution. So check out Grafenberg Disciples. Bob's playing's phenomenal, and uh, the songwriting's great. You get to hear really cool bass chords supporting a song, excellent slap lines, really cool melodies, and uh, it's also recorded in such fidelity. The production's amazing on it. Um, then I'm going to go with uh, Graves Into Gardens Live by Elevation Worship. This album also came out towards the beginning of the year, and um, it's funny to talk about progressive. If you ever a Christian album could be progressive uh, and like include so many different styles, so many different flavors, this is the one. Um, you know, Rattle is a great, you know, you know, overdriven guitar, really cool dynamics on it. Uh, the the title uh, track, uh, Graves into Gardens, amazing. Uh, uh, the blessing blew my mind away. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, I think the musicianship is great, songwriting is great, melody is great. Their hooks, they're great. You know, great in every way. This album just blew my blew me away and kind of was my solace for a lot of the years. And then one great thing for me that came out of uh, COVID was I spent a lot of time on YouTube and I just just looking for different things. And that's when I came across uh, a video said, is Floor Johnson the greatest female, uh, greatest metal singer ever? And I was like, I'm intrigued. So I checked it out and it was a compilation of her singing with Nightwish, but also doing these uh, television performances, singing Broadway songs, singing in Spanish. Um, she at times is operatic and then at times is incredibly metal and, you know, and everywhere in between. And that got me to actually really listen to Nightwish, which I kind of heard the band's name, but I never checked them out. And, uh, this year they released, um, the album Human Nature and, uh, it's different. It, I mean, there's songs like Noise, which is just a great metal driving metal song with incredible melodies and floor just kills it. Uh, Marco, the bassist blow, blows me away in every way. He's also a great singer. And, um, but what's really great, I believe that there's a, uh, kind of a, I don't know, a composition of, of multiple movements and it's called all the works, I believe it is. And it's just, it's like a soundtrack and it's so cinematic. Uh, it blows my mind. It's great to put on, 
if you just want to get lost and just kind of want to shut out the world, just put it on and listen to every, I mean, this, this album goes everywhere. And Floor is absolutely one of my favorite singers now. And anything that she, you know, on her personal channel, she'll put out these cover songs or she'll do vocal instructions and she just blows me away. I'm a huge uh, Floor fan. So there's four albums that really moved me this year. I'm anxious to hear what all the other uh, bass players say, but I'm also really anxious to hear what you guys have. What are your favorite albums? The only criteria is it was released in 2020. It could be released before the pandemic broke out in the United States, but just released in 2020. Please, in the comments below, please share it. Let's let's really try to like draw attention to these artists who really worked hard and just happened to release their album during a really, really challenging year. All right. Thank you so much, guys, and I uh, hope you have a great holiday season. Hey everybody, Ryan Medor here, and uh, I'll share with you a couple of my favorite albums from this year. Um, first one is The Wood Brothers, Kingdom in My Mind. Um, I just am such a fan of their music. I love Chris Woods playing, Oliver Woods. Everything about that band is just awesome. Um, so I am certainly a true fan of their music, and they came out with a record earlier this year that's just super groovy and awesome. And then my other favorite record of this year is um, a record by this phenomenal artist, Kashana Armstrong. Um, she came out with a record called Listen, and um, I was lucky enough to play on this record and uh, have a significant part in making it, which is amazing. But the record is really soulful, really grooving. The songs and the lyricism um, is very timely as well, so um, it's definitely been something that I've uh, enjoyed working on in 2019 and really enjoy listening to some of the songs um, like listen and fear and they bring up a lot of um, issues that are kind of like at the forefront of what's going on in our lives this year and so uh, those that record in particular um, and both of those records actually really resonated with me um, and the fun thing about them is that they're um, both by Nashville residents and Nashville artists um, I think that I've taken a lot of time this year to kind of further dig into my own musical community and I have so many friends and artists that work in Nashville or live here and work outside of Nashville touring and or used to be touring and things like that so um, I think that the best thing that I could do was to support my artist friends and then also listen to make sure that I'm hip to what everybody in this scene is creating so um, those two records the Wood Brothers Kingdom of My Mind and then Kashana Listen were the two that were some of my favorites this year all right well have a great time. Go listen to some music. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Corradetti. I'm coming to you from my home in Southern California, in my little home studio. Um, this week's question was really interesting. You know, um, what were some of the, I think it was like some of the best albums. This year, I didn't listen to too much new music. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to play on a really terrific uh, album um, from an artist out of Sardinia. Dinia in Italy uh, called Roberto Tola and the album was called Colors and it was nominated for a Grammy. I had no idea when I took the job but I do a lot of uh, online uh, sessions for people around the world but uh, man I'm kind of proud of that one that's kind of you know a big uh, a positive in a year full of negatives but uh, um you know, I, this year I've been listening to older music. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Motown, Stevie Wonder, and uh, it's just, it's weird. The older I get, the more back I seem to go. But I enjoy all the all the music I that's coming out um, for the most part. Not all of it, of course, but, um, you know, I, I play a lot of pop music and things, and... Uh, um, so I'm, I've always got my ears out, but I really can't, like, think of anything, um, you know, exactly. But I'd say Roberto Tola, you know, his uh, album Colors out of uh, Sardinia is a wonderful record. And, uh, you know, it was nominated for a Grammy, so, you know, someone must have thought it was worthy at some point. But, uh, um, but you know, I've always got my ears open for everything. I, I don't think there's really just, like, one one album that stands out or anything and you know it, it appears as if most people are putting out singles more than albums so um you know things are really different these days in any event um that's kind of what I, how i see it most of the music i listen to you know it has been older music this uh, um, year 
but uh, I'm I'm still kind of busy as a as a um, kind of an online studio guy for different artists and things. So I listen to a lot of that, and I'm you know I've been spending most of my time doing that. Um, so that's my take on it this year. It's been been a weird year for sure. And um, I hope you all have a, a great holiday season. And um, thanks for thanks for having me. Um, be well. Bye bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody out there? It's Luis Espayat from Nashville, Tennessee. Here, uh, the question is: What is my favorite album of 2020? Uh, it's very interesting because I've been listening to more, or my listening habits, I should say, has been more song centric than it has been album centric. Uh, I think even before 2020, but just the way that music is um, digested and released nowadays, it seems like the pattern is artists will release a song at a time. And then once they've collected a batch of songs, then they say, hey, now it's an album. Uh, but that, with, with that in mind, um, and with that example in specific, uh, one of my favorite albums now of 2020 is The Joy of Music, The Job of Real Estate by Wolfpack. Uh, Wolfpack, of course, the great Joe Dart on bass there. But that entire band, uh, phenomenal musicianship all the way around. But beyond that, what makes it my favorite album is the, uh, like it says, The Joy of Music. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It's a great album. It just makes you want to dance, makes you want to move, and it's just a joy to listen to. So that's one of my favorite ones. Uh, another favorite one of mine is by my good buddy Baggio from the Netherlands. It's called Deja Vu. And what this is, is a collection of 80 songs, covers, but done with a new production and a new slant by Baggio there. Uh, Baggio, for those people who don't know him, he's from the, the Netherlands. And he came to notoriety uh, as a contestant on The Voice there, but has released a lot of original music there. And is quite popular and is starting to get some notoriety here stateside. I've had the uh, privilege to work with Baggio this year on a few tracks that he's co-produced. And uh, one of them in particular, uh, Plug Plug, is a holiday song called Worth Waiting For. Uh, and that's Baggio, myself, uh, playing bass. Uh, my good buddy Sean Rogers, who's a great producer here in town, who I work with quite a bit. And also my old buddy Sebastian from the band Simple Plan is also on there. So go check that out. Um, another one, uh, I'll do another quick plug, is my own song in an exercise in songwriting that I got to do this year. It's called It's For The Better. It's uh, kind of my slant on um, a take of a, a game or a young guy. Uh, and how he's reacting to the pandemic and the isolation and that kind of thing. So those are my two plugs, but still worth uh, checking out. Um, so worth waiting for. And my song, uh, It's For The Better. Uh, again, that was just an exercise in uh, songwriting, just doing what I do in that style. Uh, so go check it out. Hope everybody's having um, a great time and weathering through this pandemic as best as you can. Uh, looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel, so hopefully it won't be for too much longer. So everybody, please take care. Hope to see you soon, and uh, we'll talk to you then. All right? Bye. Hello, bass family, everything bass, and all of my wonderful low-end loving friends in the internet land. Our question this week was, what are our two favorite albums that have been released this year in 2020? Um, and I could not be more thrilled to share with you that Miss Eliza Niels, a pianist, singer, songwriter, chart-topping artist in both blues and blues rock, she released her newest album, Black Crow Moan, this year, and I've just enjoyed it to no end. It has been so spectacular, and though I'm sad not to have been a part of it, I, I want to share it with as many people as I can. In addition, Miss Kat Riggins, um, she also released her album, Cry Out, uh, this year. And just both of these ladies are such terrific friends, and they pour every aspect of their body, soul, spirit, blood, sweat, and tears, everything they have they put into their music. I love them both very dearly and I cannot wait to work with them both again sooner rather than later. I hope and pray. But that's my answer for this week. I thank you all for tuning in and I can't wait to see what question we have for next week. Um, everyone be safe and have a good weekend.